So welcome everybody. Welcome to our second uh, webinar. And the title for this one is How to Let Go to Receive. So thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, last week, we started the webinar series with uh, Behind the Scenes of a Bioenergy Healer. That would be myself, Michael Dalton. I've been practicing doing bioenergy for over 30 years, and I wanted to create the webinars as an opportunity to uh, share some of this wisdom, knowledge, healing, support that um, I've been privileged to receive and experience and share with others and to make it available to you. Um, so that's that's really my plan. So today, before we go into the, today's talk, I think a nugget that was really well received from last week was um, I used a term that I that I use to describe bioenergy, and it was really just the term Wi-Fi. And uh, I had a lot of really good feedback from it after because people said to me they'd never thought of it in that way, and it was a great way to understand and explain um, energy healing, not just bioenergy healing, but indeed different modalities of energy healing. And what the Wi-Fi um, example was is that when we're introducing energy healing to people, like especially bioenergy healing, which is generally a hands-off treatment and it works through waving our hands around people, it looks a little bit strange, but what it's doing is working on the electromagnetic field around the body, also known as the biofield, and clearing, release, and blockages out of the biofield and reset and reorganizing the electromagnetic field, the biofield, the chakras around the body. So the natural process of bioenergy is that it's healing the body, it's resetting the body, it's resetting the energy system, which then over time starts to correct the physical body. And for a lot of people, when they first come into something like bioenergy healing, they're like, well, how can it work without you're not doing any hands-on you're not doing massage you're not doing physio you're not even doing acupuncture you're not even sticking any needles in people you know you're you're not even touching them and the way i've often described that to people is you know it it's kind of like wi-fi you know it's like wi-fi as in um wi-fi can work without you having to touch it without you having that plug into the to the actual box, right? It's traveling, it's traveling through the air. And so in healing and energy healing, um, you know, it's always nice to have physical touch, but there's another level at which we can heal that is outside of physical touch. And not only is it outside of physical touch, it works so much faster. And so that's why I call energy healing as the, it's like the, the high speed Wi-Fi of healing, because you can move a lot of energy, a lot of information without actually touching the body. And you're directing that energy through your hands as the primary focus in bioenergy. So I was just sharing that in last week's episode and, and it was very well received. So I just thought I'd start off with that this week for new people, people might be tuning in or listening in. And um, we're, I think today is the 28th, maybe the 28th of December. So we're at that cycle at the end of the year. And I, you know, I really like the end of the year as a cycle of energy. I think it's like, you know, every, every month you have like a monthly cycle, just like you have like the stages of the moon. You got your full moon, you got your new moon. You know, I, I also spoke last week about how energy flows in waves and rhythms and patterns and cycles. And so we have the cycles of day and night. We have uh, the tides coming in and out. We have the seasons. We have the months, you know, and then we have this big cycle, which is the end of the year. And we're we're really um, up there at the end of the year, just a couple of days now as we complete this cycle in numerology this month december would be a 12 and so uh, sorry would be a nine which is a completion cycle and so there's a lot of energy that is naturally we're finishing off and completing at the end of the year 
And I always think like the end of the year, it, I always think the end of the year is a great time for healing. It's a great time for people to complete stuff, to complete the healing in their body. And, um, you know, the beginning of the year is a great time for new beginnings, right? That's, that's why people write out new year resolutions, right? There, people have their, this is what I want to achieve or I want to accomplish in the new year. And, um, the there's a natural cycle of that of starting things in a new year taking up things you know uh, i mean people do it a lot with gym memberships i think the the gyms really love that they get like 1200 new members in january and then by march they got like on they only have to cater for like 300 people <laughs> you know and but so there's this huge like leap and beginning of energy at the beginning of the year. But then the end of the year is this real like completion and end of a cycle, you know. So I I wanted to kind of like share a conversation tonight around like how to let go to receive. And and as I said, at the end of the year, you know, on, on one level, it's the end of a cycle. Um. But my kind of my interesting thing about the talk tonight, how to let go to receive, is the very first thing I wanted to share with you was there's a thing that I call the letting go trap. And it's something that I teach in, in uh, the bioenergy training. And right from like level one bioenergy is like teaching people this. And um, the letting go trap is that as long as you're trying to let go of stuff in your life, be it illness, sickness, aches, pains, negative emotions, anger, fear, guilt, shame, smoking, bad diet, you know, uh, debts, bills, whatever it is, uh, unhealthy relationships, whatever it is that you're trying to let go of, you're going to keep trying to let go of it. And I call it the letting go trap because the very nature of letting go, like this idea, this concept, this belief, this feeling, whatever description where you want to describe it, the whole letting go concept is a trap for your mind. Because how, how do I say it to you? Even the fact that we came on to do a talk called letting go means you really need to listen to this talk. Because you can't let go. Um, like letting go is not the way to let go. So letting go is not the way to release. And so I hope I hope to break that down for you a little bit. And then we can ask some questions and kind of explore that a little bit tonight. Does that sound good? Excellent. Thank you for all the, all the head nodding. <laughs> um, you know, so what does that mean? Well, I, I've i seen people over the years, you know, looking to let go of pain. And I mean, this this has become my mastery, right? Like in, in a way, like my mastery has been to help people get out of pain and return to health. And some of the people, I mean, I've been doing bioenergy for almost 30 years, but I've treated people who have been sick for, you know, some people 45 years, you know, that's, that's a huge length of time. I, I mean, when I treated people who were sick for 45 years, I wasn't even 45 years old. They, they had their illness longer than I was on the planet, you know, and then after the bioenergy treatment, they let go of their ailment and they made full recovery. Now they let go of it, but not in the, traditional way because you can imagine after four, 45 years of being sick that that person had done every possible thing to let go and all the letting go that they were they were doing was not letting go of their ailment now are you ready for your first golden nugget now what's a golden nugget? Well, in bioenergy, I like to call them Michael's golden nuggets, not to be confused with chicken nuggets, equally good. But a golden nugget is just like an insight or an aha moment, an aha moment where you're like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. And I think one of the things about like, um, 
the goal the goal and nugget idea the goal and nugget concept is is like when you realize something and i i always say like in bioenergy teaching like you're you're really just helping people remember right like you're helping people remember what they already know as truth deep inside themselves because even even like an an aha moment you know when we get that aha, aha moment and we're like oh my god you know you couldn't have an aha moment if you didn't already know the answer to what the aha moment has given you, right? Because the aha moment is you remembering, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Now I get it. Now I, now I get it. Well, an aha moment is you remembering what you already knew deeply inside. I call that truth and that we all have access to truth inside of us. And so when we have an aha moment, sometimes it just resonates as truth because we already deeply know it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. So here, here's our, our golden nugget is that in level one bioenergy, I always say to people, you're always winning. You're always winning. You know, so how does this fit in with the person who is letting go of illness or sickness for 10 years? So we won't even take 45 years. Let's just take someone 10 years and they're letting go of illness and sickness for 10 years. Right. And so 10 years later, they still have their back pain 10 years. And they've been they've been looking to let go of their back pain for 10 years. Right. Well, what I, what I kind of have come to understand working with people is that you're winning at letting go. Now, you're not, you're not winning at releasing it and receiving what you want, but you're winning at letting go because the process of letting go is that you're still letting go. Letting go is an ongoing process. It's not an end result, right? So the reason you're winning at letting go is because like in essence, you're always winning, right? Like even, even if you're sick, you're winning at being sick. And if you're broke, you're winning at being broke, you know? And if you're, start thinking about this, right? Like you're always, if you're the person that has terrible relationships, and you leave one relationship and then you go into another and it doesn't work out, you're winning at that. You're the person who is always winning at that, you know? But here's the thing, you're always winning, right? And it's just below our level of awareness. So most people aren't aware of that. We're not aware that we're always winning. We're always winning without realizing that we're getting exactly what we've created for ourselves to our own unconscious habits and behaviors and, and programs and conditioning, that it's all, it's all playing out. So the kind of process of bioenergy is helping us come off the unconscious and start to see the things that we may not be seeing. You know, so we start to break the unconscious repetitive patterns. So we stop doing the same, you know, the definition of insanity, right? doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result, right? So we all have this thing that we call a blind spot. And the blind spot means you can't see your own patterns. You can't see that you're repeating the same thing, expecting a different result. You're just expecting a different result, but you keep doing the same thing. So that's, you know, an unconscious pattern. And because we have a blind spot, it means that it's in our unconscious. And by the nature of it, meaning it's in our unconscious, we're not conscious of the things that we keep doing, expecting a different result, right? So this, this kind of coming back to, the, to the, the letting go trap. The trap of letting go is that the more we're trying to let go of stuff, the more we're focused on it. And in bioenergy, folks, 101 bioenergy, what you focus on expands. I hear, I hear all the all the bioenergy students like 
the, the gap is filling in, right? What you focus on expands. It's, it's one of the beginning teachings in bioenergy that what you focus on expands, where your attention goes, your energy flows. So as we come to the end of the year and you're thinking, oh, these are the things I want to let go of and start a new year fresh, you know? So many times people say, this is the year. Yeah, this is the year you're going to stop saying this is the year. <laughs> right you know so we we keep coming to the end of the year saying we're releasing letting go of these cycles for them only to carry forward you know for them only to go forward into the new year and then at the end of the next new year we're like okay i'm ready to let go of them and then we do the same thing and it just it continues on there's a momentum that continues on and unbeknown to us we're winning at keeping this momentum moving forward with us. You know, it's because it's not moving forward by itself. We're bringing it with us, but we're bringing it unconsciously by focusing on what it is that we don't want to be focused on. And as we focus on what it is we don't want to be focused on, we're sending our energy and our creation to, to re-manifesting, re-enforcing that. Does that make sense? Beautiful. So that's my that's my first tip today. Letting go. Stop trying to let go. You know. So if we're not letting go, what is it that we are doing? Well, when people come into bioenergy with pain, I always say, you know, don't don't be thinking like I want to let go of my pain. Think of what what's on the other side. So say you let go of your pain, right? what's on the other side of not having pain say, say you had pain in your neck right and you think i want to let i want to get rid of the pain in my neck well what you're focused on is still pain in your neck so that pain is not going anywhere you come back to me in 10 years you'll still have it right you know people with a pain in their shoulder and they're like oh i'm trying to get rid of this pain in my shoulder yeah how long have you been trying to get rid of that people are like 10 years i'm like yeah because that what you focus on you're feeding right like you keep putting fuel on the fire the fire keeps burning now your thoughts are energy and when you keep putting your energy to your organs tissue cells blood bones then you keep inflaming them with the same it's like you're adding fuel to the fire right so inflammatory illness and disease is just adding more fuel to what is already out of balance so when i have a shoulder pain or a neck pain or a back pain and I'm thinking I want to get rid of this I don't want to have this anymore I'm fueling it and I'm keeping the energy going to it so if someone has pain I often think well if pain if pain wasn't there so if I say I have pain in my neck you know what's going to happen is it's going to restrict the movements of my neck and it's going to restrict my flexibility, right? So if I got pain in my neck, I'm going to be like moving a lot more restricted. And I, I'm going to be turning my whole body rather than just my neck, right? So when pain goes up, movement and flexibility comes down, right? So this is one of the key things I, I look to help people understand, as well as like working on their energy and getting the blockages out of their body, I like to get their mind organized. I like to get their mind on board with the healing. And the simplest way I do that is just simply to, for the person to invite more movement and flexibility into their body rather than getting rid of pain. So rather than letting go of pain, you're looking to invite more movement and flexibility. And by default, by increasing movement and flexibility, what has to go down? Pain, right? Because if pain goes up, movement and flexibility goes down. But if movement and flexibility goes up, then pain has to go down. And so it's like healing by default. By focus on what it is that you want, you start to dissolve and you start to release and let go of what it is that you don't want. Now, the principles that are true are true in all things. So you could do the same thing as an example with your finances. 
if you want to get rid of like debt and you want to get out of like all your bills, don't focus on your debt and don't focus on all your bills. Focus on savings. You know, as you focus on savings, you automatically start paying all of your bills, right? But you can't focus. If you're like, I'm focused on paying off my visa, you'll never pay your visa off. You know, focus on savings, your savings go up and you'll eventually like start to pay off your visa the more savings you have. But what you focus on expands, right? So then you can apply that to, to everything. Like, you know, um, you, you can ask someone like, what is it that you want? I have so many people say to me, you know, um, I, I've been in relationships and meeting people that are, that are losers and I don't want to meet any more losers. And I'm like, well, what is it that, that you want? And they're like, well, I just, I'd be just happy to meet someone that isn't a loser. And it's like, well, you know, how's that going for you? And they're like, not too good. And yeah, because you can't focus on what it is that you want to get rid of. So the, the principle of letting go of what you don't want, you know, even if it's smoking, like there's people that come to me and they're like, Michael, I've been trying to give up smoking for 20 years, <laughs> you know, um, do you help with smoking? And here's, here's a huge insight for you, right? Like, you know, so people come to a health practitioner and they expect me to say like, smoking is bad, don't smoke. And I'm like, you've been trying to give up smoking for how long? And they're like, 20 years. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, well, you're probably not going to give it up. You know, why don't you just enjoy it? And they're like, What? I can't enjoy smoking. It's bad for you. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, after 20 years, you're really probably not going to give it up. Right. So, you know, it's true. Tobacco is not good for you, but probably what kills more people than tobacco is guilt. You know, 20 years of guilt, in my opinion, is worse than 20 years of tobacco. Right. So if you're going to smoke, just enjoy it. Right. And then the person, like, this happened a lot of times, but the very first time it happened, the person came back to me, like, I think it was like they were doing a four, four weeks in a row treatment, and they came back a week later, and they're like, I don't know what you did, but I have not been able to enjoy a cigarette since. And I'm like, but I told you to enjoy it. And they're like, yeah, but I haven't been able to enjoy it, and, and I haven't like like i've lost all of the attachment to it and within literally a few weeks they gave up smoking and it's i i call it like instead of trying to get rid of something when we accept it it transforms it so instead of trying to let go of something or get rid of because have you heard that old saying what you resist persists there's, there's a reason people say that, right? Because what you're resisting, you're holding on to. What you're resisting, you're fighting. And what you're fighting, you're fueling. And what you're fueling keeps burning and keeps appearing because you keep adding energy to it. So if we want to release energy, if we want to let go of something, if we want to um, release something, one of the best ways we can release something is to shift our energy to receiving it, to being open to it, you know? And like when, like even I, I've had like some, you know, over the years you get some difficult cases of healing where, where people have been sick, like I said, for a very long time. And, you know, um, you treat them and maybe there's some challenging cases and I, I've often said to people like, you know, maybe you need to accept that you're not going to get better, which is really the opposite of what I would normally say to people. Like, I'm all about like, can you see yourself getting better in your mind? Because if you can't see yourself getting better in your mind, then, you know, your body isn't going to follow. So you can't move past the image of yourself. So a lot of people know me in my teachings as you know, you've got to be very clear in your mind about what you want to create. But with that said, sometimes I offer the opposite 
concept, which is that maybe you need to accept that you're not going to get better. And it, this like first happened with this girl I was treating with alopecia. Alopecia is where you start losing your hair. And this girl, she wanted to come for treatment, but she was doing like five or six other treatments at the same time. And, um, you know, I often think like if people are doing too much treatment, I often like try to get them to like, like healing is about slowing down and receiving, right? And I mean, this is our talk tonight, how to let go to receive, you know? So like I'll often share with someone like, if you can, um, you know, just accept your ailment. And, and she's in, she was really in that place of, I can't accept it. I'm going to have as much treatment as I can to get better, you know? And see, what I do is I observe people's patterns. And what I could observe from her pattern was that her pattern of pushing and forcing that she isn't going to receive healing. No, it doesn't matter what treatment she's doing, right? So two years later, she came back to me and she had been doing weekly treatments of like five, six different treatments. And she came back and she said, okay, I'm ready to stop doing all the treatments, you know? And it, all it was, it was about like this, to unhook ourselves from all the doing, 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 I must get better, I must get better. I, you know, it's there's too much fighting with that. And as she just slowed down and she unhooked from all of that, you know, within a few weeks, her hair started growing back. And she was only young, she was only in her 20s. And, you know, obviously your, your hair is significant and especially in your 20s. <laughs> It can be very emotional for someone to be losing their hair. But, you know, sometimes more, like doing more, isn't always the answer. And so the more we push, the more we force, is not always the answer in healing. It's not always the answer in letting go of something and releasing something. Sometimes the answer in releasing and letting go of something, you know, is to accept it. And boom, you know, <laughs> that's our boom, right? Like accepting something. Whew. You know, you can you can feel that, right? The when we use that word acceptance, right? There's a truth in acceptance, right? There's a truth that resonates and and permits through our bodies, through our cells, because we know deeply that acceptance is the surrendering and the releasing and the uh, integration of so much wounding in our lives, right? That, that acceptance is a deep, deep truth. And in terms of like, how do we, how do we receive? So if letting go is the trap and acceptance is, is sometimes like a key to like really receiving, you know, how do we really receive like, you know, cause acceptance is really just, it's still just a word. It's just a concept, you know, um, how do we really receive? And, and, and that's the kind of like something I wanted to really bring in tonight because in all healing, like I said, I, I've worked with thousands of people and in all healing, healing is healing is truly about receiving, you know, like receiving a healing treatment. And, you know, the girl that was having all these multiple sessions, the reason I didn't want to treat her is because I didn't feel that she was open to receiving the treatment. No, she was open to having the treatment. She was open to paying for the treatment, but I didn't feel that she was open to receiving because she was three or four steps ahead and she wasn't in the place to actually receive. So where is that place to receive? That place is here. And that place 
is now. And that is accessed through the breath, through breathing. Boom. And again, it's not anything that you don't know. It's you're just remembering. Not any, I'm not sharing anything that you don't know deep inside. Breath, breathing, because you, you know, you can't breathe. You can't breathe from the past, right? You, you can't store up breath from the past. You're not like, you know, that was a good year, 1984. I'm going to keep a few breaths from that one, you know? You, you can, you're going to have the best memory of your life. It could be your wedding day or the birth of your child or something beautiful. And you have the best memory, but you, you can't go back and breathe from that moment, right? Like you can think about it and you can even see if you can, if you can remember the feeling and the experience and the memories, you know, and but you really, you can't breathe from a past experience as such, right? But you also can't breathe from a future experience, right? You can't breathe from the future. You know, I always joke on my, on my courses and I say like, well, you know, there's a reason breathing is unconscious because if breathing was up to us, we'd be dead, you know? Hey, I'll, uh, I'll breathe on Monday. Oh no, I've got that thing on Monday. I won't have time. Oh, maybe I'll breathe on Tuesday. Oh no, I got that thing. I got a work thing on Tuesday. Wednesday, oh, Wednesday's not, I'm going to breathe on Thursday. We'd be dead, right? So breathing is not up to us. Breathing is unconscious. And there's a reason because breathing is part of, of the survival instinct, right? Like, um, someone covers your mouth, you start to fight. You go into immediate adrenaline, fight and flight because breathing is necessary to function, right? Like maybe you could last four or five minutes if you're good at holding your breath. But really, as we go past that, you know, we're only ever stopping breathing for a little bit, but generally we're breathing all the time. But where are we breathing from? We're breathing from now. We can only breathe from this moment. And so one of the, one of the, I think, insights that I think comes through to bioenergy in, in the very beginning of training, in the very beginning of learning bioenergy, opening up to bioenergy, opening up to that your body can heal itself, opening up to, to living in a more conscious way, is that breathing and the breath is the key to bring us into the present moment. Because when we're breathing, we're really engaging the present moment. Now, like I said, we, we can breathe unconsciously and we can do that all the time. But when we breathe consciously, there's the difference. Unconscious versus conscious. So when we breathe consciously, you know, you're breathing into this now moment, you know? And when you're breathing in the present moment, as you're really accessing the breath, you're, it starts to like pull you out of your past thoughts and memories and feelings. And it starts to bring you into this now moment, you know? And, you notice that too, like if someone is suffering with fear or anxiety, depression, um, any of these things, if you get them to breathe and to become conscious of their breathing, it will pull them out of their anxiety. It will pull them out of depression. It'll pull them out because it will bring you back into this present moment. And here's a, a bizarre concept for you. In this present moment, you have access to your full health and full well-being, and you have access to enlightened states in this present moment, right? So the process like of, of healing, and especially for something like bioenergy, is we're gathering up, drawing out, and releasing this blocked energy or trapped energy, primarily from your chakra system or from your your full biofield 
and we're clearing this energy out of your bio field so that the natural flow of energy is circulating and moving through your bio field. And when the natural flow and circulation of energy is moving through your field, all of the receptors are open and you have the capacity and I might say the opportunity to experience all like the full range of your potential states. What, what does that mean? Well, this I was treating this lovely woman who was in for treatment and she at the end of the treatment, um, she was she was just really peaceful and she she couldn't she could barely speak a word. And I was just like I was just sitting there with her and we were just like breathing together. And I just I noticed like the level of peace she was in, like was beautiful. And it, it was just this really engaging moment of just being there together she was so present you know and she's just like smiling and she can't stop smiling and she's like she's like glowing like her energy her aura is glowing and she's radiant you know and and uh, she finally gets some words together and she says to me I haven't felt like this since I was in an ashram in India more than 20 years ago. And she says, I'm feeling like such a deep, deep peace. And I lean forward and I said to her, it's always here. It's always here. And it doesn't belong just to an ashram in India. <laughs> no. It's here. It's in your heart. It's, o- it's always here. And this, uh, there's another, another experience like that where this, I was treating this young girl who, um, um, who after, I think we're like, two or three sessions in and she c- comes back in for her next treatment and she says to me um michael i don't know how to describe it but since the treatments i felt this feeling i i can't even explain it she says it's like i've no worry and i've no stress and i'm not thinking negatively and she says like i don't know what it is And I lean forward and I said to her, we call that peace. (laughs) And I laugh at that, but it's, it's a little sad to think that young people don't know what that feeling is, right? Because the we're like for the younger generation, they're so caught up in the technology and the doing, and we've access to everything now and running and chasing and doing. And you know, it, it's sometimes it's so, so good to be able to sit down and do nothing, to be able to be still. I mean, you know, medit- in meditation, we call that stillness. <laughs> You know, I mean, for years I've given as part of like a bioenergy treatment plan, I might say to someone like, I want you to go home and every day sit down and for 15 minutes a day, do nothing. And the person like, what do you mean do nothing? And they're almost like afraid. They're like, <laughs> you know, they're the face of shock. I mean, I, I don't give that to everybody. But for some people, and I can tell who needs that, right? And I'm like, I want you to sit down for 15 minutes a day and do nothing. Do you know how difficult that is for people? And not just an older generation, but for a younger generation, it's getting more and more difficult for people to be able to sit with themselves, to be able to be present with their own breath, to be able to be present 
you know, people say to me, they're having a treatment of bioenergy and they're like, I can feel this energy flowing and moving through my body. How am I feeling this? And I'm like, have you in your life ever taken the time to feel your own energy? And they're like, no. I'm like, there you go. Right? When people say, Michael, I, I don't believe I can see energy. I'm like, well, you're right. You're, you're always winning. You're winning at not being able to see energy. Well, I don't believe I can feel energy. Well, you're also right. Well, I don't believe you can make me better. Well, you're also right. You're always right. You're always winning. Who am I to disagree with you? You're always winning, right? You're winning at, at whatever it is that you have decided, right? So we come back to our talk, you know, how do we let go? Stop trying to let go. Everything that you want is already here. How do you receive what is already here? You breathe into it. Because when we breathe, we come into the present moment. When we come into the present moment, we open up to all that is here for us to receive. You know? And in, in bioenergy, we call it the vertical flow or the alignment. You could even call it atonement. But the alignment is the vertical flow of our energy, the, our, our relationship with nature, that we come back into alignment. And last week, we just touched upon it a little bit where we said, like, sometimes people are sick because they're doing things that are not in alignment with their inner core, with their truth, with their beliefs, with their joy, with their... Um, but what they understand and what they believe that is truth for them. Sometimes people are not living in that. And so the further you are away from that, you know, you're going to eventually, it's going to catch up with you, right? And so the process of, of, of letting go is not so much trying to release something as it is coming into alignment, Right. The process of the bioenergy practice is clearing the blockages out of the, each of the chakras. So the seven major chakras of the body represent seven major areas of your life, as well as the seven major glands of the body. And so by clearing out the chakras, we're clearing out the blockages that are pulling us out of alignment, right? So it, it's kind of like, if you think of it this way, I just this is perfect timing i have the pendulum here you know sometimes life is pushing us right like it's pushing us in a direction or it's pulling us in another direction life is usually like we're swinging back and forth life is pulling or pushing us right and so you know what is healing like it to really to really understand healing is healing is is helping people get out of their own way so, because we often think like it's other people are pushing us or other people are pulling us, but they're really a reflection of our own inner unhealed turmoil, unhealed concepts, ideas, beliefs. And so we're pushing or pulling ourselves based on our wounding or programming or conditioning. And so really what healing is, it's helping people let go, not not trying to get rid of something, but the very act of letting go brings us back to balance. The very act of stopping to push and pull will... See, it took nothing for the pendulum to find its center, right? It doesn't matter how fucked up our life is, how off balance our life is, how much it's like we're going back and forth, and it doesn't matter how much the moment we stop pulling and pushing, how quickly we find our center, how quickly we come back to truth, how quickly we come back to peace. Because just like the center of the pendulum, it's always there. Peace is always here. 
Now, could you relate peace and health together? Could we say health is always here? Mm, interesting concept, maybe to delve deeper into on another day. But one thing I have found is that you can bring someone to a state of health and their mind can still be in a state of unhealth. And what I mean by that is like, I mean, my specialty is pain. And I, I mean, this happens to me all the time. I, I could be treating someone and we'll say, I measure people's pain on the scale of zero to 10. Zero means that the person has no pain. And 10 means, you know, they're in the worst pain that they could be in. They, and they wouldn't be able to move at a level 10 pain. Well, so we'll say like level five, level six, people are in significant pain, maybe enough to stop them working, right? So, and lower than five, people will have pain, but you know, it can be chronic and they're, they're still working and they're still going on, right? But just say I have someone who's in a level six pain, which is pretty bad, right? Like a level six, you might have to, like definitely by level seven, you're stopping work. And if you're, if you're kind of tough, you'll still go to work with a level six pain and you just get on with life, right? But but it's, there's a lot of, that's a lot of pain in the body. And I, I could treat someone in a session and, and this just shows you like how energy works, right? I could, I could be working on someone in, in, in a 40 minute sessions are roughly 40 minutes in a 40 minute treatment. And during that treatment, I'm, I'm observing the energy change in their body and their pain dissolve. And when I feel into, because all pain also has like a, an energetic effect. And so I'm feeling in and I'm like, their, their energy is flowing really well now in this, we'll just say it's lower back pain and their energy is flowing really well in the lower back. And I, you know, we're at the end of the session now and I'm feeling really good because I did my job, right? And I asked the person like, how's your back feeling? And sometimes you'll get someone, they'll say, I'm the same. And at first, when that first happened, I was like, I remember like, you know, my initial ego was like, I can't believe they're still in pain. I just gave them a great session. I was sure the pain was gone. And then what I realized, you know, over the years, and as I was practicing, learning and going deeper with it, I realized that the person's pain was gone, but that they still thought the pain was there. And what I, what I discovered was that when you ask someone, how do you feel? And they answer you quickly, they're not answering from feeling, right? They're answering from memory, right? When someone responds to you really quickly, they're responding from memory. They're not responding from feeling. If you ever get someone, like if you ask someone how they feel, have you ever noticed what people do? They have to check in. They're like, they have to like, you have to go down a different set of pathways and you have to like get in there and, and like, you gotta, you gotta feel it to feel it, right? Like, and so what I realized was how do I help the person understand that their body is already healed, but their mind hasn't connected that the pain has left them. So how do I bring, you know, which is a kind of the title of our talk tonight. It's funny how this all comes back full circle. I love when it weaves together, but how do I get them to receive the fact that their body has already let go of the pain and it's only been 40 minutes, it's too much for them to even believe because they've had their pain for 10 years. So it's, they can't even understand that it could be gone that fast, right? So when I ask them, how do they feel? And they're like, I'm the same. They're automatically, it's like a default program. They're automatically bypassing their feeling and going straight to the same answer that they've given thousands and thousands of times, right? And so 
what I do is how do I interrupt the program? Well, I, I shared it with you earlier. How I interrupt the program is I ask them to breathe. I say, what I'd like to do is take a few breaths and just take a moment to feel your body. You know, and when they take a moment to feel their body and they feel into their body and they breathe in and I'm like, how's your pain? And it's like they're looking, you can see they're looking for the pain and they're like, oh, well, it's not there right now. And their pain is gone. And now the breathing is helping their mind to connect the dots, to connect to the fact that their body has changed and now it's up late, up leveling the mind. Now the mind is changing because the breathing is, is connecting the feeling to the mind. So now they're like, oh, it's not there right now. But now there's another program that sometimes kicks in. And the next program that kicks in is it'll probably come back again. <laughs> you know, and that's and so you're dealing now not just with the physical ailment, but in bioenergy, we say you have to heal physical, emotional, and mental. And if you don't heal all three of those, then we keep carrying the stuff forward. Does that make sense? You know, and that's that's really the process of like stripping things down integrating things back into the body and so when we breathe in and when we use the breath and we connect back to um the feeling the breathing the feeling and we connect back in then the body starts to communicate to itself the body starts to receive the feelings right and so i mean we could take this and we could now do another whole talk on one of the key things with bioenergy is when you breathe into your feelings, you start to receive them. You start to receive, rather than trying to get away from them, we start to breathe in, we start to receive them. So the key to receiving healing is to allow yourself to go inwards rather than outwards. So we say you got to go in to get out. And so really, as we continue on our webinars over these next few weeks, it's a where each week we're taking a step inwards, a step in this journey to the, to the inner world, or I call it the internet, where we go into the inner world of the multidimensional self, the the intertwining, interacting thoughts, feelings, body, which is a reflection of our consciousness. And so as we start to strip these away and, and start to open up the mind, you know, and, and don't be afraid of opening up your mind. No one has ever lost their mind by opening their mind. <laughs> you know, we open our mind, we expand our mind, expand our consciousness and allow ourselves to come into more um what we call in bioenergy like upgrading from this from the the older energy system of the solar plexus the wounded warrior to the coming into the healer coming into the heart-based consciousness um and really that's uh yeah I, I guess that's enough to take away for for one evening it's hard to an hour is up almost already um but yeah that's my that's my golden nuggets for you for for this evening i hope that you've enjoyed our talk next week which will already be the new year um we're going to specifically focus the talk in on how to create health in 2023 so let's start the year off with the creating the level of health that we want to have um, like I said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So, you know, join me next week. We'll start a year off with, with some programming to, to reprogram, reset the health system 
for the health that we want to have in this in this coming year. Um, so I'm going to finish off, but what I'd like to do is just, even though we're at the end, maybe just open it up a little bit to any questions. And uh, if anybody is leaving now, thank you for thank you for tuning in. And um, but I'll stay on for a few moments, answer any questions that people have. And sometimes they're the best golden nuggets. I love people's questions. And uh, thank you for tuning in. So if you're if you do want to ask any questions, it'll take yourself off mute and then it'll be recorded as well. Hey, I have a question. Who's speaking, please? Sam. Sam. Hello, Sam. Hey, you said, how do you receive? You breathe into it and you be present. Is that the same or do you need to intend when you do that? Is that an intention? Oh, interesting. Yeah, Th there's there's kind of like multi there's 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 multi kind of processes and multi ways In intention will definitely be breaking down intention in another class. We we can do multiple classes on intention alone. Um, but in terms of receiving, like you, you can have an intention, but there's even a point where you have to let go of the intention. Like you, you what your intention does is it focuses the mind and it directs the mind. But even it, like if one wants to like understand, say like the law of attraction, the law of attraction is ask for what you want, which is the intention. Then ask, believe, believe that it's possible or that it can come about. And then the third part is receive. And the receiving part is the same kind of principle that we we're talking about tonight, um, which is that in order to receive, we also have to let go of even the intention of what it is so we put the intention out into the world but then we also have to trust that it's going to come back to us but if we're letting go of the intention and we're holding on to it then the intention doesn't go out to come back so it there's a real like belief is also trust so you have your intent you put it out but you also let go of it and then when you let go of it, it comes back to you. And the, the receiving it is, am I able to receive what it is that I put out into the universe? And one of the ways that I can receive that is that when I breathe, the breath brings me into the present moment and I start to line up with all the things that I asked for when I was in alignment. So all the things that I asked for from a place of alignment start to come to me because it's like a tuning fork. They vibrate into my frequency when I come into alignment. So I don't have to make anything happen. I just have to come into alignment and then they vibrationally show up and meet me at the place at which I'm vibrating. Does that make sense, Sam? Does that does that answer your question? Yeah, you just said a whole bunch of really cool things there. I'm like trying to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I said. Sometimes the questions themselves are the golden nuggets because it's like, yeah, there there's so much to unpack, isn't there? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I think I think that's really key for me because I I'm really trying to manifest or be in the right frequency for certain things that I want, and I think I'm getting stuck on something there. So that helped. That really did. Thanks. Beautiful. Yeah. So last tip with that again, just think of it as a tuning fork, right? So you know when you hit a tuning fork, it has a frequency or a vibration. So you're matching yourself up to the vibration. So in terms of health people, I always say to people like, see yourself healthy. Can you see yourself healthy? Because if you can't see yourself healthy, then you know, you're matching the vibration of sickness, right? So look, no one can stop you from thinking yourself healthy. Even if a doctor says you're never going to get better. But nobody can stop you from thinking that you're going to get better. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? No one can stop you from seeing in your mind yourself completely healthy. No one can stop you thinking or seeing that. 
But as you think it and see it, you release the chemical vibrations in your body, the, the chemistry that starts to match up with that. It's like healing by default because you're, if you keep seeing yourself healthy and well, the only way your, your own conscious can resolve conflict is to make you well, you know? So like, that's, that's how people have used the power of the mind. Like even like to, another note there on that would be like in sports psychology, you see yourself, you feel yourself and you hear yourself accomplishing your goal right well that's no different than healing you can see yourself feel yourself and hear yourself what does it look like what does it feel like what does it sound like if you're in the best health you've ever had and if you just do that for two minutes every day you're programming your mind and your mind is programming your body and then your body is like stop thinking that you're not healthy but if you keep thinking it, the only solution for your body is to actually become well, because it cannot maintain conflict. Your body will inevitably match the mind. That's how powerful the mind is. You know, another we can go into another whole story <laughs> with that. You know, beautiful. I'll take uh, I'll take another question if anybody has a question. Hey, Michael, it's Kathy. Kathy, hi. Welcome. Um, well, the question, it's just more of a verification. Um, I started doing with the intention of just trying it, um, some 10-minute chakra meditation. And the preface at the beginning of the um, tutorial said, you know, just see what you feel. Just, you know, try it. The first time I tried it, the first day, uh, I was just doing what you said, not letting go. I was like, oh, I can't feel a thing. Oh. The next day I said, just sit down and relax and enjoy the 10 minutes. And it was just kind of amazing how I just was focused on, okay, where, where would that chakra be? And focus, and my brain was just saying focus and it was just relaxed. And, and then I could feel a little tiny vibrations or something so that was exciting so i don't really have a question i'm just saying what you said tonight resonated with what i felt and what my intention was when i was on my second day of doing chakra meditation so that's mm. cool that your words tonight i see a demonstration in my own life mm. thank you mm. thank you Caddy. that's beautiful yeah, I mean, it just, it sounds like you got out of your way, right? And that's the, the purpose of healers. The, is second, the second time I did. Yeah. Help First me time to go. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for your words too and your time. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you everybody for tuning in tonight. Um, we'll hopefully see you next week. And um, yeah, thank you for tuning in. If you have any feedback, send me a message or an email. Uh, thanks again. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye now, every, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.